Hey, I'm Nikki. I'm the author of Chicken Keeping Pure and Simple, and I run the social media channels Purely Chickens here on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. And today we're talking about external parasites. So a friend of mine dropped off a chicken this week and she's like the sweetest thing. Uh, her flock was kind of destroyed. So she was the only one left and she was lonely. And I said, I would take her, make sure she's healthy and all that stuff. And when I picked her up, I didn't see any mites and I was like, okay. And luckily I kept her separated because two days later I noticed she did have mites. Chickens are living outside. So they're going to get mites and lice and things like that. And it's okay. It's nothing to be horrified about. They're going to come in contact with birds, wild birds are going to come in contact with chipmunks and mice and all sorts of stuff. So things can give them mites that, you know, you just can't really help. And they're not like dogs where we can give them a flea med once a month and it keeps them away. Um, we just kind of have to be diligent about checking our chickens for mites. I like to check them once a month. And right now during fall, when my chickens are molting, there's feathers everywhere. The leaves are starting to fall. All those things can attract mites. And so they're more likely to get them in the fall in my experience. So before I treat this chicken I have in my garage for mites, I'm also gonna check my birds to make sure they don't have them because I might as well mix the solution once and treat everybody. Now I have 31, I think right now, chickens. I don't know, I have a lot of chickens out here right now. So I'm gonna make sure that I check a good variety of them. I'm not gonna probably catch all of them because it's the middle of the day and it's a hard time to see mites anyway. So I'm gonna check the chickens who maybe have dirty vent feathers, chickens who are missing feathers that are not molting. So here are the signs for mites. If you have chickens who are missing feathers, particularly vent feathers or like feathers above their tail, uh, chickens who are kind of acting lethargic or depressed, chickens who are itching a lot or kind of preening their feathers an excessive amount, they're not sleeping on the roosting bars. This sometimes happens when chickens associate the roosting bars with mites because at nighttime the mites are more active. So they are associating the... So they're associating the roosts with the mites so they don't sleep up there. Uh, chickens with um, dirt, just like generally dirty vent feathers that you just can't get rid of. Or chickens who are not laying eggs. If your chickens aren't laying eggs, this is a good sign that there may be some mite infestation. I wrote an article all about um, external parasites. This includes things like chicken lice as well and scaly leg mites and depluming mites. And those kind of mites live under the skin, so you can't even see them, which makes them more difficult. So go check out the article. It's linked down in the caption. So here in Ohio, my chickens have dealt with northern fowl mites, and that tends to be the most common. They can also get something called red poultry mites. My chickens have never had those, and we actually never have had lice here either. But the treatment for all the different types of mites and lice is gonna be pretty similar. So I'm gonna tell you how I deal with mites, and you can use that for other types of mites, and you can also use that for lice too. My bird dog is really interested in my chickens. I got to go put him away before I do anything. When we're talking about finding the mites, like how do you know for sure that they have them? These are my best tips. You can go in to the roosting bars in the morning and run your finger along the roosting bar. If um, you see little black specks that kind of turn to blood streaks when you run your finger across it, those are mites. Another great place to look is right on the chicken eggs. If you find eggs in the nest boxes that have tiny little black specks crawling across the eggs, those are mites. Sometimes they'll come off the chickens while the chickens are laying eggs and you'll find them there. If you run your hand through the bedding, sometimes they'll crawl on you. I know that sounds gross, uh, but mites cannot transfer onto humans. They also can't transfer onto like your dog or your cat, so no worries there. Then you can also check in their feathers themselves. It's easier to see it at night. So if you go in with a flashlight, at nighttime and look around their vent feathers. That's going to be a common place for them. Check under their wings, around their neck. Lice are a little bit different. Um, you're going to see, if it's a bad infestation, you're going to see lice eggs around the feathers. Check around the vent for those as well and around the neck. If it's mite eggs, it's going to look more like dander, dust, kind of just like dirtiness around the base of the feathers. But if it's lice eggs, you're going to see that they're kind of attached onto the, the feather shaft and you can definitely kind of tell what those look like. The lice themselves are more tan, translucent little guys that kind of crawl around. Uh, they're a little bit bigger. The mites are so tiny, like tinier than a speck of pepper. Okay, I'm inside my coop right now and I'm gonna run my finger across all of the roosting bars to see if I see any of the little uh, red streaks I told you about. And it doesn't appear that I do um, right now. So 
think we're good there. I do have two chickens who have been broody and they've been stuck in these nest boxes for about a week. So if anybody's gonna have mites, it's probably gonna be them because they're not out dust bathing. They are not preening themselves. They're just kind of sitting still. So I'm gonna check their feathers first. She is not happy with me. You're fine, you're all clear. You get to go back with the girls. After like digging around in the feathers, um, I'm definitely gonna check my hands because there's been times where I have not seen mites at all on the chickens, but then I put them down and they're like crawling on my hands. So everything's good. I don't see anything. She's clear. Let's check uh, Corella. Corella was clear too, but she was a little bit more feisty. So I couldn't record her with my other hand. So she's doing okay. I'm going to put her back down. She's probably going to go back to being broody, but we're going to work on that later. All right, I'm in the run now. This is Cece. She jumps on my shoulder when I come in here. Um, I'm going to check the chickens that have like dirty vent feathers. I only have two of them and um, they do need fixed if it's not mites, but for now we're just checking for mites. Literally using a broom to hold my phone up right now. I really need to go find my um, thing. But all right, this girl here has like some dirtiness around her feathers. She's not too bad. Um, so I'll just peek around. It's kind of hard to do when you're by yourself, but... Cece, get out of the way. <laughs> All right, she looked clear. Nothing, nothing to be concerned about there. Checked a few other ones. Nobody seems to be um, dealing with any mites out here. So I'm just gonna leave these guys be. We are gonna clean up these feathers. You can see like there's just so many feathers from my chickens molting right now. All right, I'm in my <laughs> messy garage. Uh, we're working on a couple house projects, so just ignore all that. But the chicken that I have is in here and she is in need of some treatment. Really hard to see on her feathers where they are because um, she's not totally infested. She just has a few, so we are gonna treat her anyway. There are a few things you can use to treat mites and lice and chickens. And my favorite, I'm gonna tell you here at the end, but let me go over a few of the other options. One option that you have is ivermectin, and you wanna get the poron kind. It looks like this. It also comes in smaller containers and the liquid is like a blue liquid. It's made for cattle, so there's not a lot of testing on chickens. And there is a few reasons I don't use this for mite treatment. Now it does double as a dewormer for roundworms. Um, so if you have chickens who have roundworms and you have mites, it might be a good option for you because you can just do it all in one, one dose. Some people deworm uh, yearly. I just do it when I see an issue, but if you're doing it yearly, it might be something you wanna do during like the fall molt because there is an egg withdrawal with it. The only thing about ivermectin is it is dangerous if you do too much of it. Um, I'm not gonna give you the dosage of it because there's multiple different um, you know, suggestions out there. So I don't use it usually for mites, but uh, it's like a few drops on the back of the neck and like under the wings, but um, it depends on the chicken's weight and all that. So I don't use that for mites. Another reason I don't use it is because you have to do it again um, in 10 to 14 days when the, the original eggs hatch because it doesn't kill the eggs of the mites. So it's a double treatment. There's an egg withdrawal both times for about a week. So you can't eat the eggs during the time that they're being treated. There are a lot of dusting powders out there. I don't like to use dusting powders because one, they're not as effective. Um, you can't be sure that you're getting it everywhere and that it's doing its job. And two, you have to do it multiple times. Um, and then three, it can be dangerous to breathe in most of them. So, um, you know, I don't wanna be breathing in dust. I just don't, so I just don't use that for my treatment. Permectrin is another option. Um, this one I've seen people commenting in different chicken groups saying that their chickens were ill after using it, that they were lethargic, um, that it didn't work very well. So it's, you know, has a lot of known um, side effects. There's like all these instructions for calling poison control if it touches your skin or your clothes or your eyes or you breathe it in. So um, it's just a dangerous kind of substance that you need to be really careful with. It's also really toxic to fish. So if you live near any waterways, you don't want to get it in any waterways around you. Um, there's instructions for how to dispose of it. It's just not something I like to use. It just sounds pretty dangerous to me. So I don't have any experience with it. My favorite thing to use is Elector PSP. This is what it looks like. My bottle's kind of old. Um, it lasts a long time because it doesn't expire. It is expensive, but there's eight ounces in here and it makes a ton. And so you can just keep it on hand and use it 
time after time. You can share it with a friend um, and it works really, really well. It's a one-time shot. So you put it on the chickens, you spray it in their coop, you spray it on the chickens, or you can dunk the chickens in it. I'll give you some more instructions here in a second, but you do it one time and you don't have to do it again. It kills the eggs and it kills the mites and the lice. So it's like a one-time thing and it's there's no egg withdrawal. It's a natural substance. You can use it if you're doing like organic farming. It still is um, a viable option and um, it's not <laughs> dangerous for you to touch. And I don't even like wear gloves when I use it with my chicken. So this is what I use. It is more expensive, but it has a lot of benefits and it's super easy. I'm putting the link for it down below. I do not have an affiliation with Elector or PSB. Um, I don't make any money or commission off of the link and they don't even know who I am. So this it's down below. I wish I had a discount for you, but I don't. This is what the bottle looks like. Um, it's, it's very small, it's eight ounces, but like I said, you don't use very much. So if you're gonna mix up like about a gallon solution, which is a good amount if you have a small flock, you really only need about one tablespoon of it. It's actually less than one tablespoon. Um, about nine milliliters is how much you need to make a gallon of it. You wanna shake the bottle really well anytime you use it because it can settle on the bottom. Like I said, there's no expiration date. You just wanna keep it out of the sun and out of you know a too cold of an area. So I just keep it um, in a cabinet. There's two ways to, to use um, Elector PSP that I have found useful. If, if I'm going to treat my whole flock, I've got about 30 some birds, I'm gonna mix up a five gallon bucket of it. I'm gonna use a little bit warmer water. That way when I'm dipping them, they're not you know too shocked by it. Um, and then I'm gonna mix up the amount that I need for that amount of water. And then I'm gonna dip the chickens down in the water and I make sure their head and their nose are above water because we don't want it to get in their nose, um, their airways or in their ears. So just kind of put them down in the water, swish them around a little bit, make sure all their skin is coated because it does take a minute for it to get through the feathers into the skin. So kind of rub your hands around them. It takes about maybe five seconds and then I let them go. I'm gonna do that on a warm day. I don't wanna do that on a day that it's really cold or really windy because I want the chickens to dry out and not be um, in distress. So if it's like 55 degrees or above, I would feel comfortable doing that to my chickens. But if it's colder, um, I'm not gonna do the full dunk. The other option is to mix up a spray bottle with the solution. Um, this is really great if you have a small flock or if you don't wanna do the full dip because it's too cold. I've used before like the big containers that you mix up um, weed killer in. You can buy them, they're clean with no weed killer in them. Um, and then I just mix it in there and then I, it's easier for me to like do the pump and then spray them down instead of just like using a container like this where I have to continually do this. But if I'm only treating one chicken, um, I'm not gonna use a big huge thing I'm just gonna use you know a small container like this something else you're gonna want to do um, after you've treated your chickens is to clean out your coop take all the bedding out take the nest pads out take anything out that's removable spray everything down with the Elector PSP solution let it dry uh, let the coop dry out completely and then you can put everything back new bedding and, and all that um, I like to burn our bedding <laughs> just because mites kind of freak me out sometimes, but um, I'll burn it. Um, you can take it really far away from your chickens and it's a compost pile in the woods, or you can bag it up and throw it away. And that's it. I've never had to retreat the chickens when I use Electro PSP, which I really appreciate because I don't have time to be out there cleaning out the coop again, spraying everything down again, treating every single chicken again, because I do have a lot of chickens. If I had five chickens, I might use something cheaper that needed a repeat treatment, uh, but because I have so many and I have a lot of people relying on my eggs, it just is easier for me to have no egg withdrawal, treat them once and be done. Here is this chicken. Um, my followers helped me name her Shirley. People that I got her from had two different names that they called her and we ended up voting on Shirley. So her name is Shirley. And I'm pretty sure she's either gonna stay here or she's gonna go to a friend of mine. Like I said, she doesn't have a really bad infestation. So there's you know not a lot of um, mites that you can find and there's not a ton of like egg material. So it, it wouldn't have been obvious to anybody when you know they were bringing her over to me. They did not know, I'm confident of that. It's just, you know, one of those things, it kind of shows up and we're just gonna deal with it. After handling her, you can see them crawling on my skin. They're so tiny. All right, I'm gonna go get a lighter to light the bedding on fire and I'm gonna leave that there with uh, the spray on it to let it sit for 24 hours, then I'm gonna wash it off. Everything I talked about today is listed down below. The article that I wrote explaining uh, all external parasites, including scaly leg mites and depluming mites, plus any of the products that I talked about. 
and my book if you want to check that out. That's it for today. Until next time, keep chicken keeping pure and simple.